And D is I'm the sorry. resolution. I'm sorry. And D. Okay, D is the resolution for uh, Deacon Monte's 100th birthday. Okay. Uh, Mr. Seeley, was that a second? Second. Okay, motions made by Mr. Taylor to approve consent agenda A through D. Seconded by Mr. Seeley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion carries unanimously. <coughs> uh, may we possibly... Mrs. Carter's here, and I think she's interested in agenda item number seven, which is the assessment. So if we do that now, you can go home, right? Okay. Uh, Mr. Cully, are we ready for a uh, proposed contract with Blue Ridge appraisal? Agenda item number seven for general reassessment of property. Um, yes, we are. We just have a, a recommendation that... Uh, ranking the pool. Well, we'd already ranked them at the last meeting to Blue Ridge. In working through the contract, um, they had offered us a reduced price if they didn't have to have a performance bond, um, which would save us approximately $29,000. We did lower some other, uh, some other fees uh, as well to, to, to bring the, uh, the price down from the original of about $341,000 um, to the amended proposal that we have now, but if, which is um, $265,000 without the performance bond. In discussing this with the county attorney, um, we feel it's sort of important to look at that performance bond. Uh, the way you end up paying uh, for a reassessment, you do pay per parcel. So every month they're doing parcels, you're paying for it, um, even with a 15% contingency. If you were to have a problem, you're not going to be able to use that money to really hire another firm. They're not going to want to come in and use part of what somebody else has done. And while we don't really want to go into this expecting that this company or the other two that bid on this would have a problem, if you don't have that performance bond, you really don't have any uh, protection. So we've uh, made uh, contact with uh, our insurance, Carrie Bay Corp, and they're looking into the matter now, um, and, and we may be able to uh, purchase a policy ourselves cheaper than what the company would do, so we'll take the company's yeah. lowest offer and, and buy them on. Now, certainly it's up to you all if you feel like you don't need one. You've done one in the past without it. Right. Having lived through a bad reassessment, I know some counties that had reassessments that they paid for and did not use and totally discarded because it was so bad and had to start all the way over. It, it, it could, I'm, I'm not saying we're going to have that, but is uh, maybe $20,000 worth of insurance in a performance bond a good idea? Our recommendation to you would be that you would authorize us at the top amount for the performance bond, which was 294. Two, two if we can purchase one through our own insurance carrier, then we would uh, recommend the contract with Blue Ridge for the 265 and then we would, we would uh, purchase a performance bond through our insurance carrier, hopefully at less than what Blue Ridge could get one for us for. And so that's sort of staff's recommendation on that. But you certainly could save that money if, if you so chose. All right. And Blue Ridge, has said, Blue Ridge has said in their summary that they actually did one without a performance bond, didn't they? I that is I correct. That. They have. For us. For us, they have. You've done one in the past without it. Okay. Uh, does the board wish to... Uh, Go without a performance bond or just to be just extremely conservative and make sure there's no problem? A couple questions. Mr. Underwood? Yes. yes. Question. Uh, in, in terms of having properties reassessed, do we have any idea of what percentages have been reassessed in the past? Over the whole thing. I know, the complete thing. Every, every, parcel. every parcel in the county. You have to go 100%. How many times has that occurred? No, I'm saying how many times has that occurred? Every five occurred years. They, no, no. Oh, where they fail? Yeah. Oh, they fail. I don't know where. I have no uh, report on Blue Ridge ever having an issue. I do know several counties in, in our area that, that suffered with a different vendor, Middlesex being one, that we, we didn't reject it. I wish we had. But a neighboring county did actually reject the same vendor after they, their reassessment was so bad. So I, I do know of it happening. Uh, Mrs. Carter might can speak to it of what she's heard. Uh, she works with it, you know, obviously with the commissioners more than, than I do. But so really so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a low percentage, so but that's one of those things. It's a 99% it's a chance that you're not going to have a problem. But if you do have a, <laughs> a problem, is it worth – it's sort of like car insurance. You don't really need it. You're know, paying thousands of dollars for it. But when you're in an accident, then, you know, you're glad you have it. So, so your recommendation, from, based on what I'm hearing you say, Mr. Culley, is that – it's, it's best to have that in place. I, I believe so, yeah. I think it's staff's recommendation so, that you probably ought to have it um, okay. for that low. If you can get it for that, uh, on that much money, on $265,000 contract, right. to have a, have a performance. And, and I would okay. defer to the county attorney on his thoughts on that as well. <laughs> I wouldn't do it without 
Yeah, we do want that. No, it's not. Ms. Emerson, yeah. I mean, it's, re it's really a business decision, but I mean, Mr. Right. Cully is right. It's just, I mean, it's insurance, and there is a cost to it. And it yeah. It, it, but it's a fraction of what you would pay if you had to re if you But if, it. if we spent $250,000 on this assessment and the numbers were totally askew, we could say, oh, we don't like this. We're throwing these numbers out. We've lost $250,000, and we have to do it again. Right, and you might have a claim for damages against the defaulting company, assuming. And they've been our they've yeah. been our assessor for at least twenty years, right? Close to twenty years. I think they've done the. I remember the very first one that they did, and the numbers were high. Remember the one we had, Mr. Chairman, back uh, probably twenty years ago. It was a new company. It was not Blue Ridge. Here, sir. I think that was that was before I was born. No, it wasn't before you were born. It may have been a year before you came on board. Yeah, it was. Uh, but that was really a high one. I mean, it was uh, assessments went up forty percent, some forty-four percent in some places. Really a high one. Uh, but and in fact, we had the state people come in and 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 check behind them to make sure that they were were correct, and it was proven to be accurate. I mean, it was back when the economy was really pushing up and uh, things were. Real estate was really going out of the sky. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, and maybe someone can answer the question, if we buy the bond, and the scenario that Mr. Cully has just talked about is the fact that we don't like the numbers. Well, I want to add yeah. to that. Okay, okay, go ahead and well, add. Well, that's not the simplest case. It, it, it would have to be clearly um, negligence on their part. The, the Board of Assessors are actually in charge of the assessment. The contractor is really sort of a consultant. <coughs> He's doing the field work, but we're not hiring them to be the professional assessor. The board of assessors, which is why it's important of, of who you place there. So if he's given them numbers and they accept all of those numbers and they turn out to be woefully wrong, whether high or low, and the state were to come in and validate that, then we could go back and come to this insurance policy and say they, they didn't do the work. They didn't go, obviously didn't look at things or do if he were to give them numbers and the assessor, Board of Assessors starts changing all that stuff to what they want, we will not be able to go back against the contractor because yeah. technically the Board of Assessors has changed it. So it, it, they have the last choice. They have the, the last, last, call, last, yeah. last call on that. Um, and so that may also, also play into it that we're, we're at a risk either way. Um, we just wanted you to be aware of it. And from a staff perspective, the last thing we want is to have a problem and you all say, why didn't we have insurance <laughs> or a bond? It's and it was in the specs. It was in the bid specs that they they provide one. Yeah, we've had well, Blue Ridge. Yeah, we've, we've, we've had Blue Ridge since I've been on the board. the past 20 years, Mr. Chairman, then I'd, I'd look at it differently if we, if we had a new company coming in. But if we haven't had any issue for 20 years with this, so once every five years with the same company, right. and they've been very reasonable with us, with us I think it would be um, money that I don't think we need to spend. And we've had, and we've had one assessment. There was no bond uh, out there right. with this company. But we're talking about twenty nine thousand. So the options 29 are versus the options are we spend um the, 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 the two ninety four <laughs> or two sixty two ninety four six oh six or two sixty five two thirty two. Two sixty five we're saving twenty nine thousand dollars but we have no insurance. I, and, and we might be able to purchase the insurance less than that. That was our that's you, what we're well, looking at. You wanna we can we can do Anything we really want to, we can say take their highest bid of 294 with a bond. We can say take 265 without a bond, or we can say take 265 and have staff find a bond can, can from we, Vacor. Can, from Vacor, those are basically choices. Can we take determine whether we can get All a bond for a lesser mm -hmm. amount than the 265? If we want to say well, hey, 29, we want, it's we want to, no. Let's say if we wanted to guarantee that we would at least get. $200,000 or $150,000. Oh, oh, you said lower, a lower bond. Right. Lower bond. Yes. yes. We can do that as well. All right. So in that case, we would, you need this contract right away. Yes. But your contract right away doesn't preclude us from a wild, a little delay of getting the bond in place, does it? That is correct. What we would recommend is a not to exceed number. Authorize the contract with Blue Ridge for 265000 
and, and let us explore and bring back to you a bond. And if you, if so, so be it. We come in, we say, hey, we can get a hundred thousand or hundred fifty thousand for ten thousand dollars, or we can get the full amount for fifteen or twenty. You can. Right. You can pick and choose what, right. what level, and still have the operate. Right. You can still say zero, nothing. You can We're still good. say nothing. We're good. That's the safest That's way. Yeah. All right. So, is there a motion to that effect that we appropriate two hundred? I'm just going to round off. Okay with that. We appropriate two sixty five, two thirty two for the actual contract with Blue Ridge, and allow staff. What? I've already had money appropriated, not the full amount because it's split over two budget years. So I don't really need the money appropriate. Oh. I need you to authorize the contract. Authorize the contract with Blue Ridge and provide the option for staff to uh, bring back a performance bond not to exceed $29,000. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. I would just like to cast a protest vote as nay. I have had people say they had issues with Blue Ridge, and I know we're going to do it, so I have that liberty. Okay, next agenda item, if there is one. Mr. Um, Mr. Cully, is this your request for text amendment, or is this Mr. Wilson's? Or is this Mr. Fincher? Mr. Fincher, why don't you do this? Can I, can I do this in five minutes? <coughs> Mr. Fincham has agenda item number six. Mr. Chairman, you have in your packet um, a request from a business owner uh, in the county uh, to for the board to consider uh, adopting a definition in the ordinance that allows what what are called to is extended stay motels. Um, you have the applicant's letter. You also have the planning department's recommendation related to this issue, uh, as well as an email from Mr. Wilson in generally supporting the proposed request. Um, I think this is an issue uh, from a planning perspective. I'm not sure that the conditions are in place in the county uh, to support this type of, of motel. Um, and staff, I think, has concerns that it might lead to other extended residential uses not necessarily associated with business travel. Uh, you also have the letter from Mr. Wilson indicating that one of our businesses has indicated that this might um, assist them. From a planning perspective, again, we have one business, um, and we just have concerns about the, the text amendment. However, if the board does want to go forward with this, then we would recommend that this be uh, in the form of a special exception permit in the B1 um, district that would allow the board to impose conditions, uh, create standards related to those uses, uh, and to go through a public hearing process uh, on this type of, of application. Staff did not want to spend a lot of time on a proposed text amendment without some direction from the board, uh, which is why we brought this issue uh, to you uh, instead of going directly to the Planning Commission. And you've talked to the prospective applicant about what he wants to do, why he wants to do it, and things of that nature? The applicant has, has met with staff about this, and, and the result of that was um, the, the letter that they have requested. Uh, that is their business model um, that they have for this location. They are already advertising um, facilities that they do not presently have at that location. Um, and in fact, we Wait, say that again, they're advertising facilities that they don't have at that application at that. Yes, sir. Kitchens, false advertising, incorrect advertising, yes, leading advertising. Okay. Okay. 
but that could just be their enthusiasm of understanding this is going to be approved or thinking it's going to be approved and they start advertising before it's already done. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Wilson, do you want to add anything economic development wise? I, I don't This is in, I take it this is in the Carmel Church area somewhere. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, this is a structure that has interior corridors. It's not an external access kind of facility. Uh, and what I would be willing to do is have some more time with Mr. Fincham to discuss some of his concerns about it and get back with the applicant to see if they would be willing to uh, give us more assurances about performance. So, Mr. Wilson, you're saying you'd like to have a little more time to work with, with staff and the planning department and possibly the applicant to make sure that there is not a, an economic development uh, project that we miss out on. That is exactly right, sir. Okay. Well, does the uh, board have any problem with allowing staff to continually work through this and bring it back to us in that, another month or so? That would be fine? Okay. That's fine. So, um... We don't, since it's a request for a text you. amendment, we don't need a motion because we're not going to approve the text amendment yet or the request until staff talks. That takes care of agenda item number six. We have no public hearings at 730. We have public comment at 730. And then we have uh, agenda item number four, which is just more discussion on the solid waste management plan and then discussion of the capital improvement plans. There are no closed meetings. Need a break? Let's take a 15 minute break. We'll be back at 730. <laughs> it's actually an 18 minute break. I'm trying to help myself. So, All right, we'll be back at 730. All right, we will reconvene. Uh, <clears throat> this is really good to note. That's probably the one time we've come back exactly on time and I was late. So at this time at 730 uh, is the time that the board opens up public comment to any person uh, who would like to speak about any issue. And, and that's what we're doing. There, there was a public hearing last Tuesday on the solid waste plan. I've talked to quite a few folks out, uh, out in the audience, and, and many of them would like to talk about uh, the solid waste plan and the proposed landfill and recycling facility. So. We, you can do that as part of the public comment section. We are going to have a meeting, uh, or Caroline Recycling, the folks that are, are proposing the landfill, uh, are going to have a meeting next Tuesday, 630, at the Reedy Church Ruritan building, which is the old Edmund Pendleton School. So again, next Tuesday, 630, Reedy Church Ruritan building, Caroline Recycling will be making a presentation to any and all in the county that would like to see it. So that's it, um, just to let you know. And now I will open up the public comment section for anyone who would like to speak on any matter that they would like to speak on for three minutes maximum. When, uh, when I hit the gavel, you can come to the podium State your name and your voting district, and then your three minutes will begin. So the public comment section will be declared open. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Now you can come up. You had your hand up. Come on up. And just state your name and your voting district so we can identify you for the record. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'm Brad Ashley. I'm a resident of King William County, although I own approximately 100 acres in Carolina. I'm here before you tonight to speak in regards to SPEX 04-2013 Aggregate Industries, which their special exception was improved, approved in September on the 23rd of this year. Uh, that particular approval was changing from agricultural preservation in the comp plan to an active mining site. It's uh, 250 yards from my home. It's 150 feet below the elevation of my home. And this approval gives me a direct visual and an unimpaired, um, un unfiltered noise uh, directly to my home. Uh, in going through this process, I'd like to say that the people I work with are extremely professional. 
I met with the planning staff, planning commission. I did a presentation. I met with the planning commission to do a workshop. I met with the applicant, the applicant's lawyer. I presented to the board. I submitted a letter to the board of supervisors, and I requested verbally and in writing to be um, made aware of when the meeting was to be held for the vote. Uh, this, this project was deferred several times, and I was never notified. I just want the board to know that my absence at that meeting does not mean that I was in favor of the conditions. So if there was any misunderstanding about that, I want to make it clear. Um, I acquired a copy of the approved conditions, and they were greatly approved, improved from what was originally submitted, and I thank you for that. But as I stated in the public hearing to you and to Mr. Bavard, the applicant from aggregate, the only condition I was really concerned about was the cap, the limit of time on this operation. The applicant wanted 10 years. I thought five years was realistic. I submitted information to you at seven and a half years. At seven and a half years, the applicant only has to mine 20 acres per year. So that's, that's where that would be. And what we have is a standard five-year review process. And my request for you tonight is in 2019, if I'm able to come here, I will be here to present to you to review what aggregates has done and where they're going and to get a specific ending point to this project. It's, it's 200 yards from my home. I'm going to hear it for six years or five years, 62 hours a week. And it's not a quality of life issue that's really improving. The reason I built my home was to retire here in peace and quiet. And now I have a mining operation. So my request to you is to please consider when we do come back for this in five years to ask them where they are and to give a specific ending date. There's never been a question that they could mine the stone. It's just a matter of whether they have to stockpile it or whether, or whether they don't. And it's a money issue to them. And I'm asking for your consideration, and I thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Yes. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as pub public comment? My name is Larry Parks. Okay. Um, La Larry, wait till you yeah, get to my name is Larry Parks. Okay. I had to ask uh, which one of y'all was my supervisor to tell you what district I'm in. You're on Sunshine Road? Huh? You're on Sunshine Road, too? I'm on uh, Burris Lane. I'm right backed up to this landfill. That would be me. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't find out about this, uh, really start looking into it until yesterday. Uh, I'm concerned about, I was reading through and I see that there's a... Uh, uh, mechanisms to handle light, but I'm concerned about noise, I'm concerned about smell, I'm concerned about what this is going to do to my property value, but mostly I'm concerned about the water. Uh, the aquifer that flows right under that is where my well's at, and uh, anything that sinks into the ground with this uh, disposal site is what I'm going to suck back up in my well, and uh, that's a concern. Um, but I'm I didn't see anything listed that talked about that. I see it's, we're talking about light. But uh, what are the hours of operation? And I went on to the Virginia site to see what was required in terms of uh, deep water, deep well mining or management, and saw that there's uh, action for anybody that's in violation, but doesn't say what happens to the property owners around that have got contaminated wells. And it's just a matter of uh, landfills you're going to have stuff in the water. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. And, and again, you heard, heard me say that they're, they are going to have a community meeting next Tuesday. Right. At, at 630 at the mm -hmm. Research no. Region. So I'd, I'd love it if you could make it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? <coughs> what was Larry's last name? I'm Joanne Anstead. I live on Dry Bridge Road. The, um, I just found out about this, but uh, I do, would appreciate your listening to... Uh, there was an accident in front of our house on Sunday, and someone was just driving carelessly and broke the culvert pipe out in front of our driveway, which is going to be a county expense. I don't think if anyone has ridden over on Drybridge Road, you see how curvy it is. And we already have so many lumber trucks coming back and forth. This could be very dangerous, and the, the roads just can't handle it. The, uh, the area that the uh, proposed uh, waste station is, is uh, the eagles are living there. 
And you see them flying over there all the time. And it would be very, very sad. Um, I think that's about it. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anson. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Elena Smith, and I am from the Western Carolina District. I first want to apologize for my attire. Um, we've heard here after Looks fine. practice. <laughs> so, um, last month, I was in the treasurer's office paying some taxes, and I noticed there were some late filing fees on my bill. And I noticed every year I get that form, I turn it in, and mail it. Um, so I asked him about it. Before the lady even had a chance to speak, about seven, eight other people in line, everybody that was in there at the time, spoke up and answered the question before I even had a chance. Did you buy a new vehicle this year? And went on to tell me that if you bought a new vehicle, you were supposed to report it. Every other county I've lived in, I've never had that happen. In North Carolina and up here, I spoke with my mother who lives in Orange, friends that live in Spotsylvania, and they get these they get information from the DMV. So I'm not sure why there's, you know, I mean, duplication of effort and the work and why we have to report that and why we would be getting charged 10% late filing fees on this just after, you know, I guess it's 60 days or 90 days. I can't remember exactly if you don't know 60. about it. Is it 60? So my request is that you guys look at this law and think about it. It's very, um, I mean, nobody reads the back of the forms and the fine print. It's how many bills and stuff do you get in the mail and pages and pages of small text. And nobody, there's just too much time. And nobody does it, unfortunately. So it was a surprise. I was very upset. Um, and to go along and say, there was, like I said, seven other people in the office at that exact moment that had the same problem that were all very upset with this. And I think it is something that should be revisited and looked at and taken into account. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, I'm Catherine Burris, and I'm from the Mattapena, uh Voting District. And I'm here tonight to speak to the issue of the ordinance concerning the landfill. I mentioned last week that the history of Caroline and its landfill operation should in itself be a lesson from which we can learn. The proposed site of this landfill that has not yet been approved is within the Reedy Church, um, the Reedy Creek uh, drain area. The water that runs off of there will run into Reedy Creek and within less than four miles be in Mattapanai River. With that in mind, think about the number of people south of there, or east of there, that will be drinking that water. We have a farm. We irrigate out of Reedy Mill uh, Creek, or Reedy Creek. When we irrigate, we're going to be disposing whatever is in that water on our property. We get wet when we have to uh, do repairs onto the irrigation system. We eat vegetables out of those fields. We have family that will be drinking water out of the wells from uh, the aquifer. We cannot imagine anything positive coming out of this in terms of water quality. Every landfill that I've ever done any looking into has the potential for some runoff and some waste to get away. Just this week we have heard about uh, an article in the paper, heard about the drywall in New York being pulled out, was the Chinese drywall being disposed of in landfills. Where do we think some of the air trash might be coming from? Do we want Chinese drywall in Caroline County and run the risk that comes with that? Traffic on 301. Let there be an accident on 95 
and you cannot pull out of the side roads for the traffic that has been diverted onto 301. My husband works for a farmer, frequently is driving very large equipment down the road. We have 20 cars behind him on any given day on a tractor. I know that landfill drivers or just people who are delivering trash are paid usually by the number of loads. Do you think they're going to be satisfied at driving 20 miles an hour behind my husband's tractor with 20 cars between them and the tractor? No, they're going to pull out. They're going to put everybody in that line of traffic at risk along with any potential oncoming traffic. I beg you all to reconsider any opportunity to have a landfill brought to Caroline County. It doesn't matter to me whether it's a commercial construction landfill or a um, municipal landfill. We do not need it in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barris. Uh, folks, I'm just supposed to remind you that applause is not allowed, because if we allow applause, then we have to allow booing. So please refrain from applause. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, my name is Dorothy Amos, and I live on Dry Bridge Road. I spoke last week about the concern for my beautiful pond and the drainage that will come into, into my well. I want to tell you, the road is a crooked little road on Dry Bridge Road. <laughs> Last Thursday morning, coming from my job, I met a log truck. He put me in the ditch, right down there by my little pond. I have two ponds, a little pond and a big pond that we built. I do not know with trucks coming off of 301, 95, or whatever direction they're coming, how I'm going to be able to get my car out on that road and go to 301 to go to my job. So I'm begging you. And so I hear some supervisors and other people say, oh, it's not bad. It's a state-of-the-art dump. A dump is a dump. Wood stinks if you pile it up. Trash stinks if you pile it up. Anything that's dumped over a period of time is going to stink. And I dread going out of my yard and smelling that odor. I'm begging you, please think before you vote for this thing to come to Caroline. And think. Do I want to live? Would I like to be neck in her house living and smelling that and having to put up with all those trucks? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amos. My name is Nina Southworth. I live in the Mattapani District. Uh, I live about three miles south of where the landfill would be coming. Um, I also am concerned about um, traffic, uh, the smell, um, but mainly I'm concerned my parents live right across from where this landfill would be. And my parents have living, been living on Sunshine Road uh, for 50 some years. Um, I would be concerned about their water. I would be concerned about traffic on 301. Um, I would also be concerned um, about noise. Um, and I just want to state my opposition on this landfill coming to our area. Um, I just would ask that you please reconsider and not bring this landfill to Caroline. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Southworth. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Yes, my name is James Baker. I live in the Mattapani District. I have the uh, same concerns about the landfill that have been spoken, uh, property values, the water issues, what it would do to the water. The uh, main biggest thing with me is the traffic on 301. I live on 301 now, and as she stated, if there's a problem on 95, there's a lot of days I'm trying to get out of my driveway. And I travel on 301 to and from work, and there's limited passing lanes. And I just think with trucks maybe not being able to go as fast, there are people taking chances. 
trying to get by because everyone's in a hurry. And I think it would pose a risk to, to all those on 301. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Hi, good evening. My name is Carl Wardley. Uh, I just moved here uh, about a year ago. And I didn't know much about you gentlemen, so I looked you up online. And I think the chairman has on his website, the last thing you said about the past year was how we want to keep our rural community as it is. And I sure, <laughs> last line, we live in a beautiful place, and that's why I moved here from Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, wow. People think I'm crazy, I know. But this is a beautiful place and friendly people. And I just can't imagine having a dump put in the center of this. And of course, what everybody said about the water and the rest of it. So you guys got to stand up and tell these people, forget it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And I'm not from Massachusetts. I'm from Brooklyn. But the good thing is you're a Yankee fan. Excuse me, sir? The good thing is you're a Yankee fan. OK. <laughs> For those who don't know, Richmond used to be the Yankee farm team when I was a little boy. So that's back when they had leather helmets or whatever. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak during the public comment section? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I'm Myrna Satterwhite. Satterwhite. I live in the Mattapanai District. I have lived on Sunshine Road for 58 years. My husband has lived there for 80 years. And this is something that we think that Caroline County does not need. Besides the air pollution, the, the water pollution, it's, it's just too hard to imagine. And I hope you all will consider how, how detrimental it will be to Caroline County to bring such a thing in this county. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adderwell. Good evening. My name evening. is Roger Brown. I live on Burris Lane, and I've lived in Caroline County for 15 years now. One of the things that made it so attractive to me was small town America. I like small town America. I'm a transplant from Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, and if you're familiar with that area, there's a place called Blue Plains. Crap House Taj Mahal. And if you've been there on a hot August summer day, the stench is stifling. I don't want that here in Caroline County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? My name is Don Filso, Bowling Green District. Uh, what I'd like to tell you about landfills are landfills do produce CH4CO2, which is methane. Methane is a hazardous substance. If you have a system down here that is going to produce that, and if you throw a match at it, it will catch on fire. I can assure you that. So something to consider before you know, we do anything as far as a landfill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Filso. Good evening. I'm Felicia Smithers, and I live in Reed Church District. Good evening. Um, I'm just becoming aware of this landfill issue, and I'm not really used to speaking on things that I haven't researched for myself, but just from listening to the other comments, I'm concerned as to whether this is a choice that's already been made to have the landfill in the county, and it's just a, an option of where to put it, or if there's still a decision to be made on whether it's going to be done. Because sometimes there's a, a lot of discussion, quote, discussion around an issue, but the actual decision has already been made. 
So if this decision has not been made, then I would encourage you to research it further. And if it has been made, I'd ask you not to um, cherry pick where it's going to go. Nobody is going to want this in their district. So if you choose to put it in Manapana, people are going to have a problem with it. If you choose Reedy Church, people are going to have a problem with it. If you choose Bowling Green, people are going to have a problem with it. I just ask that y'all are upfront, honest about what's going on. And if the decision has been made and it's just a choice of location, then let us know that so then we can decide how, as a public, we want to confront this issue going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smithers. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during public comment? Anyone else who would like to speak during public comment? Now, you can talk to me anytime. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, this, this is a little off subject for everybody else. but Major Mosier, go right ahead. Uh, Scott Mosier from Caroline, uh, Bowling Green District. Uh, the reason I've came tonight is that the board has struggled through some financial times, and I know decisions are very difficult for you to make during the budget year. So you have asked for some information about our fleet, the vehicle cars that we have, and how many cars are over certain miles and, and the years of the cars and how old they are. Currently under county policy, it's four years or 120,000 miles. Uh, we have 28 vehicles with over 100,000 miles and 17 of them over 120,000 miles. And we're projected to have our vehicles for a period of about eight years. I have all those numbers and statistics here for the board so that they can be informed on their decision making when it comes to budgets. We know there's no money available, but it's nice for you to have the information available so when you're making those decisions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Major uh, I'll Mosier. give them to Alan so he can get them to you guys later if you don't That'd mind. That would be great. I, I thought the sheriff sent us that via email. Um, the sheriff's, okay, the sheriff sent the email. To, oh, you have an email form? That's fine. He asked me to bring the uh, actual papers for tonight. Okay. Anything in red is over 120. Anything in orange is over 100. Okay. So it's well, four, that, four of them are over 150. So, But it's good to have an assessment of what we have and right. to look towards the future. And as far as landfill, you know, we don't have enough information yet, but, you know, obviously we'll be considering our opinion on the traffic for that as well and okay. the trucks on those roads for public safety reasons. So hopefully we'll make it to the meeting and some, get some more information at Reedy Church. Reedy Thank, you, Club. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Major Motion. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? Anyone else who would like to speak as part of public comment? <laughs> Anyone else who would like to speak? We're declaring public comment closed. Um, and, and trust me, we understand your concerns, all those who spoke about the landfill. Uh, again, I believe there was a meeting in Mr. Underwood's district a couple of weeks ago, um, small informational meeting to start. Uh, the meeting at the Reedy Church Ruerton we're going to have next week is going to be an informational meeting. Uh, this proposal has been before the board for quite some time uh, via the applicant. He has talked to the board for quite some time. Um, with regard to Ms. Smithers' comments, which are excellent, we have not made a commitment to have a landfill. We have not made a commitment um, on, on any situation there. What we have done is we've looked at uh, what would be a host agreement, what the county would get, what they could take, what they couldn't take. And this is a process. As I told the folks when I was in the back of the uh, audience, we are going to take as much information as we can. We're going to have as many meetings as we can. And we are going to make sure all the citizens are, are informed and at least understand what's going on so that they can help us make this decision. And I'm sure the reason you're here tonight is because you would like to help us make this decision. And <laughs> whatever way you feel about it, that's why you're here. And we do appreciate that. This is going to be a process. The text amendment, which is the item we talked about last week, we didn't vote on last week. And we're not voting on this week because we weren't sure there was enough citizen input. And quite a few people said they didn't know. With that, we won't vote on it until January sometime, maybe not even then. But the reality is that's only a text amendment. 
then there has to be a proposal that goes through the Planning Commission and then comes back to the Board of Supervisors for us to actually vote on. The text 